My story is a bit shocking, but what I will tell will completely change your attitude towards this rapid technological progress. You might be startled to find that science says it's possible to travel through time, but not necessarily in the way you might expect. For generations, people have been drawn to the idea of time travel, which allows them to see past events or glimpse the future. This continuing obsession with time exploration precedes modern blockbuster films such as Interstellar and the Marvel series. Despite criticism from some, we have nine fascinating accounts of personal experiences with time displacement. What do you think drives this enduring fascination with time travel? And can science ever truly unlock the mysteries it presents? Join us as we embark on a journey through the enthralling realm of time travel, beginning with the man who suddenly vanished after building a time machine, but now he's reappeared years later. Number one, the disappearance of Madman, Mike Markham. Mike Markham, a 21-year-old electrical engineering undergraduate, had an idea to construct a time machine in his Stanbury, Missouri home in the early months of 1995. He was driven to create a time machine in order to obtain the winning numbers for the lottery in the future. Because he was short on resources, he made use of what he could get. He used a compact disc laser to minimize the air resistance between two poles, resulting in a continuous arc. However, Mike soon noticed a circular heat mark that resembled a vortex, so he added a sheet metal screw to explore what the mark could be used for. According to Mike, the screw disappeared and then reappeared a few meters away after some seconds. Even though that sounded fascinating, Mike had other issues. The CD laser required more power to function than he had previously used, and after more testing, it actually caught fire. Mike then decided to construct a second time machine, but he needed large transformers to do so. However, he couldn't afford the new transformers. So what did he do? He stole six large transformers from a nearby company since he was desperate to construct the time machine at any price. Although it is still uncertain and mysterious how he managed to move the six 300-pound transformers, Mike accomplished it successfully. Unfortunately, his experiments did not turn out well. He caused a major blackout in his area while he was conducting the experiment. Not long afterward, Mike received a visit from the police who were demanding to take him into custody for the transformer theft. During his trial, he discussed the project he had been working on behind closed doors and stated that he intended to begin working on it in public going forward. After listening to Mike, the court concluded that he was mentally ill. Mike was then imprisoned for two months. During that time, he became well known outside of prison because so many people were truly interested in his story. Arthur William Bell got in touch with him after his release and invited him to appear as a guest on his Coast to Coast AM radio show. Arthur William Bell was an American broadcaster and author. He was also the founder and the original host of the paranormal-themed radio program, Coast to Coast AM. During the interview, Mike stated that he needed money to support himself because he no longer wanted to construct the time machine illegally. After the interview, several people contacted Mike and they sent him money and resources to help him accomplish his aim. Mike was determined to build the machine and was willing to sacrifice his life in order to test it, despite Arthur William Bell's attempts to discourage him. Arthur William Bell labeled Mike a maniac as a result. Mike inexplicably took a liking to the label and went on to become well known with it, but people would not stop making fun of him and they claimed that the time machine was a fake. The news about Mike and his machine was eventually forgotten until years later, when a Coast to Coast AM listener called in to inquire about it. Arthur William Bell never got through to Mike, but he promised to call his contact and find out. At that point, Arthur discovered that Mike had not been in contact with anyone since 1997. According to Mike's friend, they last heard from him when he announced that he was going to carry out one more experiment. Intrigued by the story, people started calling Coast to Coast AMI to share their experiences with Mike before he vanished. Just before the program ended, a caller said something strange regarding Mike's disappearance. He said that in the 1930s, a male corpse was discovered by law enforcement on a beach in California, with the body looking like it had been crushed 
by a metallic tube. The man had an odd metallic thing on him that seemed to be a cell phone, but the authorities were unable to identify the body. Now let's go back in time to Mike's most recent visit to Coast to Coast AM. Arthur William Bell had asked Mike what he would take with him if he ever got to use the time machine. Mike promised to take his smartphone. The man's body reportedly looked like Mike's due to the metallic device that resembled a cell phone on him. At that time, mobile phones had not yet been developed for the masses. There was also much speculation that Mike had traveled to the past where he had died as he had promised Arthur William Bell that he would travel with his cell phone. One of the many stories that have been told about Mike since his disappearance is that he relocated to Hawaii due to financial difficulties. According to the narrative, Mike is presently working in Hawaii to save money before returning to the mainland to repeat his experiments. Number 2. A Time Traveler from the Future The name John Teeter first popped up in July of 1998 through two faxes that were sent to Arthur William Bell. The faxes discussed the impending catastrophe following the Y2K issue and also the findings of time travel in 2034. The second fax stated that the sender had been around since April 1998 and had been acquainted with persons he met during that period. He said that he would return to the future shortly. However, Bell never heard from the strange man again after receiving the second fax. In 2000, a person with a similar background started posting on the Time Travel Institute forum, under the handle Time Travel Zero, with a story that resembled the ones that Arthur William Bell had received by fax. Until January 2001, when someone posted as John Titer on Arthur William Bell's BBS forum, the individual kept using the username and never their real name. The person also claimed to be a time traveler and said he was available for questioning. Titer started talking about future events in 2004, predicting that the Olympics would be canceled, the United States would be divided into warring factions, and there would be a disease outbreak. In addition, he declared that Russia would destroy China and the European Union, as well as important American cities. According to Titer, he exists in a parallel chronology that differs from ours by one to two percent. He said that because Unix difficulties were expected in 2038, he was on a quest to get an IBM 5100 so that he could debug systems in 2036. John Teeter shared images of his time travel device along with his military badge. Teeter eventually ceased publishing in April 2001 because it was discovered that his stories were contradictory. Later, an image came up online of a man known as the Hipster, carrying a camera at a period when his style was out of place and dressed in 21st century fashion. There was much conjecture that the man was John Teeter. Even though Titer's predictions failed, his legacy lives on, and many people believe he was a time traveler. We'll never know if he was a real time traveler or not. Number 3. Edward's photo of year 5000. A guy named Edward appeared out of nowhere and claimed to be a time traveler in a secretive interview. Of course, making it to this list requires evidence. Edward presented his narrative in Armenian Park with his face veiled and his voice modified to disguise his identity. The guy claimed that he had photographic proof from the year 5000. The most intriguing thing here is the picture of the flooded city. According to Edward, he participated in a top secret project in 2004 that allowed him to go 3000 years into the future. He stated that he emerged in the year 5000, standing on a wooden platform with everything else made of wood. Edward claimed to be in Los Angeles in the future, with the main difference being that the entire city was submerged in water. He said that the planet was entirely submerged as a result of melting ice caps from global warming. He also stated that he communicated with individuals from that year and that some humans had transformed into animals. Furthermore, Edward said that civilization ended by the year 5000. He then pulled out a snapshot of Los Angeles submerged as proof of time travel. The shot appears absurd, but Edward maintains that it was influenced by the time travel phenomenon. According to experts, time travel of a thousand years could only exist in fiction and movies. Thus, many people question Edward's story and assume the photo was manipulated. Number 4. Greta Thunberg Greta Thunberg is a teenage environmental activist 
who calls on leaders to decrease their carbon impact. Her experience leads us to believe that time travel might actually happen. When you think about it, it is exceptional to see a girl Greta's age developing an interest in and actively participating in the fight against climate change. But when clever users discovered a 19th century photo of a girl who looked remarkably identical to Greta, it made others question whether she was a time traveler. Given Greta's active efforts to preserve the planet, many people believe she goes back in time to do it. One Twitter user even wished her luck while doing so. In the 19th century picture, three children are sifting for gold in the Canadian Yukon Territory. However, due to the obvious resemblance, you would probably not ask which of them looks like Greta. What's more stunning is that the girl in the 19th century, who is supposedly Greta, and the Greta of the 21st century, have the same hairstyle. Though Greta never reacted to any of the time travel claims, she shared a black and white picture of herself before the old photo was found. This black and white photo allows you to easily compare Greta to her claimed lookalike. And while Greta is the only one who can provide the answer, she isn't ready to say anything, so we may have to believe anything we like. Number 5. J. Bernard Hutton and Joachim Brandt's flash travel to the future. In 1932, two German reporters, J. Bernard Hutton and Joachim Brandt, visited the Hamburg Altona shipyards to research a story. Everything looked typical when they arrived at the site, until the unexpected occurred. Suddenly, bombs began to fall from above into the middle of the yard. Despite their fear, they managed to photograph the occurrence. As soon as the bombs started to fall all around them, they fled from the location in a car. To their astonishment, when they processed the photographs they shot at the scene, they discovered nothing in them to back up their claims of the bombing. As a result, an editor disregarded the story, and no one talked about it again. Then 11 years later in 1943, Hutton came across a newspaper article about an airstrike carried out by the Royal Air Force Squadron on the same shipyard that he had visited with Brandt. What's even stranger is that the scenario was precisely as Hutton and Brandt reported it in 1932, but what happened to the two men on that day is still unknown. One can only conclude that they briefly went back in time to see the bombing. Number 6. The Bookstore In 1996, a police officer and his wife were out shopping in London. The man's wife walked inside the bookshop to get some books on her own, and the police officer opted to wait for her outside rather than accompany her inside. As he went along the street looking for a CD store, he became aware of an odd silence that drew his attention to the surroundings. First, he observed a vehicle similar to those from the 1950s, and he must have assumed he was daydreaming until the van honked and swerved around him. He discovered he was standing in the center of the street, and everyone else was dressed in 1950s style. The cop was completely confused and unable to make sense of what was going on around him. He walked back to the bookstore where he had left his wife, but to his amazement, it was no longer there. A women's clothes store was located next to where the bookstore had been, which added to the man's confusion. But he still had to find his wife, so he entered the clothes store. As soon as he stepped in, the apparel store transformed into a bookstore. The policeman discovered that the clothes store he saw actually existed in the 1950s, and there is no better explanation for what happened to him except time travel. Number 7. The Time Traveler from 2030s in 2018, a guy named Noah claimed to be a time traveler from the year 2030, and the news spread like wildfire. He confessed that he was a member of a covert government agency that was sent back in time to stop a Mexican drug gang. Noah said that one of his team members did something improper, and as a result, the entire group was fired, leaving Noah trapped in 2018. He revealed how he had gone across time, as well as some predictions regarding the future. He went on to declare that Martin Luther King Jr.'s granddaughter, Yolanda Renee King, would become President of the United States. He was well-versed in American politics when he predicted Donald Trump's re-election, but he did not indicate who would succeed Trump. Whether he's correct about Yolanda or not, we'll find out in the coming years. He also stated that we would be able to make genetic changes to unborn kids, which is very encouraging. At the very least, we can avoid some genetic illnesses and, more importantly, 
shape newborns precisely the way we want. That could make for a fascinating future. Noah stated that no one will use Instagram in the future, but Facebook and Snapchat will be extremely popular. When asked if people lived on other worlds besides Earth, he said that scientists would reside on Mars. Finally, he stated that he had used an anti-aging drug. He claimed to be 50 years old, but the medication kept him from aging, and he now appears 25. He said that he needed to take the drug to avoid aging while time traveling. He made other forecasts, which included South Korea going to war against the United States and Queen Elizabeth passing away. Number 8. Andrew Carlson In 2003, the FBI arrested a 44-year-old man called Andrew Carlson after he won the most amount of money in history. But how? In two weeks, he had gone from $800 to $350 million, and such a dramatic increase in fortune would undoubtedly raise concerns. Andrew was arrested for insider trading, but instead of fighting the charge, he made a dramatic four-hour confession explaining how his 126 high-risk transactions paid out. Andrew claimed to know exactly how the transactions would turn out since he came from 250 years in the future. But his claims were not believed, and he was imprisoned until he could reveal his source. He did not, however, give up any sources, and as part of his plea deal, he agreed to inform the police where Osama bin Laden was and how to cure AIDS. It's unclear if he truly gave the authorities that information. Nonetheless, the FBI was determined to prove him a liar, but they couldn't uncover any evidence of his existence until December 2002, barely three months before he was detained. As if that wasn't enough, he fled on his way to court for the bail hearing and has never been seen again. Number 9. Edgar Allan Poe if none of the stories in this video have persuaded you regarding time travel, this man's story will. Edgar Allan Poe was an American poet and short story writer who created fiction stories for the future. His novel, The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket, told the story of a shipwreck. In the story, during the shipwreck, the survivors had to draw straws to determine who would be killed and who would be eaten. The youngest lad, Richard Parker, got the short straw and was eaten by the others. Fast forward to 46 years later, a real shipwreck occurred, and the survivors are forced to pick straws, just as Alan Poe described in his novel. The youngest survivor drew the shortest straw and was murdered. And what's the boy's name? That's correct, Richard Parker. You can agree that it can't be a coincidence. And if you think that is enough, here's another Edgar Allan Poe story to persuade you. His novel, The Businessman, discussed frontal lobe syndrome with remarkable precision. The weirdest aspect is that Allen wrote the book before neurology existed. So how did he know these things? It seemed he was writing about actual events that had occurred, and indeed, it provided the solution that many people were looking for. The logical conclusion is that Edgar Allan Poe was either a supernatural entity with the ability to see the future, or a real time traveler. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.